Welcome to From the Bottoms to the Top. As always, I'm your host, and I got my co-host with me. Anthony Wolford, how you guys doing? So I have a very special guest with me today. My lovely wife, Chanel Swain, started a business a few months ago, a part of her paralegal experience. And uh, can you please let us know and tell us a little bit about your business and what you've started? Yes, thank you guys for having me today. You're welcome. We're welcome. glad to have you. Yes. yes. So during my law school studies, I've been employed as a paralegal doing pretty much the work of an attorney for um, the community of San Joaquin County for the last couple of years and it was probably the end of last year I started realizing how many people in the community need these services but mm -hmm. they just cannot afford them. Mm -hmm. So just to start out, my rates are like one fourth of an attorney's hourly rate. So nice. what you pay me one fourth of what you would pay an attorney per hour. Right. And they work a lot of hours. Yeah. So that's pretty much where it kind of started from. I was doing a lot of pro bono work, helping out a lot of family and friends in the community, and I'm like, there's really a need, a need in this yeah. service right now. So it started about a year ago. I started doing those types of services, um, family law, civil, and criminal. So for family law, I take care of a lot of the form filing for dissolutions, which is divorce, um, child custody and child visitation, mm. child support, and um, things like family-related um, domestic violence cases. For civil cases, I do a lot of the small stuff. So when people ask you, can I can I sue this? Can I sue somebody for this? I handle a lot of those. I help people navigate whether or not that's a good decision to even make. Right. And then with criminal, I help a lot of the members in the community that have been a, um, convicted of wobblers. Um, wobblers are offenses in California that can either be a felony or a misdemeanor. Mm. So a lot of the time, um, people of color, they will get charged with the latter. So they're going to get charged with the felony when it could have been a misdemeanor. I help people that have done their time, they've gotten out, they're out now, get that felon, felony crime reduced down to a misdemeanor, which then can be expunged. Right. So it's giving members of the community an opportunity to really start fresh without that, that mark on their record there. That's cool. And that's, that's definitely good. real beautiful. And, you know, um, can you talk just like a little bit more of just kind of like, like the, with the wobblers, like how, like, man, how do you get caught up in something like that? Like, it's usually an offense that can have been violent, but it didn't end up being violent. Okay. So there was the lack of the, the weapon or the lack of the force or a lot of the time it's just that thin line between the, the person charging you. So if that's the district attorney in most cases, mm. or if you are being charged with the family law, like criminal case, someone's pressing charges against you. A lot of those cases are the cases that we find in California that have really strict guidelines where the offense can be as strong as a felony or it can get charged as lightly as a misdemeanor. So right. unfortunately, there's a lot of statistics or probability. Yeah. You have to bring me back for another time on that talk. <laughs> right. On who most likely gets charged with the felony over the misdemeanor in those circumstances. But that's pretty much what it boils down to. That's so crazy. with with your assistance, you can help members of the community bring their charges down to a misdemeanor, basically. Correct. And then nice. once it's a misdemeanor, it's Very eligible nice. for expungement. So right. then we can go forward with the process of just getting it expunged, which is removed from your record. Okay. Like, right. That that real fresh start. Yeah. Man, that's and that's 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 really dope. And so I know you also um like you help people with their businesses. Like I know there's some things that <laughs> when I need a post or like, hey, can you critique this for me or you know, so what are the things that you do with helping people with their businesses, with their brands? Can you speak to, to that part of your business? Yeah, so recently I've really grown my love for business organization law. And mm. that's the area of law that governs the legality and how you run your business. So it fascinates me how simple it is to mess it up. It's so simple. It's yeah. so easy. <laughs> they want you to spend all this money to get your licensing and your legality and get legalized to sell or operate. But just like that, you can throw it all away. Mm. So I help my clients navigate through the type of business they're trying to run legally right. so that they have less potential to have to start all over, that rebrand, that relaunch, that start all over. Right. All that means to me is dollar sign. Right. That means everything you've pretty much done, Work. Right. You gotta start we over. have to start over. So I pretty much help in the areas of marketing and advertising, branding and positioning to help you already get your business out there on a good start but then i'm also on the strategic planning side of, of it 
giving you the legal overview of your business. So I'm helping my clients figure out what they want to do and how they can do it legally. Right. So sometimes that's as simple as, hey, I want to file for my LLC. So I'm helping them file an LLC, no yeah. big deal. Some people really have to break it down. I want to be able to do this, but there's rules and laws that regard how you handle food or how you ship food or when it comes to providing a service, there's li like liability and there's right. waivers. Right. So I help my clients navigate how to legally run the business that they want to run. Nice. What are some examples nice. of, of businesses that are operating? What are some of those examples that could just ruin their whole yeah. business? And Prime example. Um, a lot of the time we can infringe on another company's trademark rights. So what that means is we cannot act and make profit, make money off their likeness, anything that can be construed as theirs mm. and, and lesser words. So a lot of mistakes that we make is thinking that our name is different enough. Our logo right, is different right, enough. Right, right, right. When really there's another company out there that has paid for the rights to all the corners all you just things. thought you caught, you kept. Mm -hmm. So, so it's just, it's that, that mistake right there is a really big one. Um, and then the liability is the, the next number one. Um, the LLC is all that is, is a limited liability company. And what that does is protect your personal assets from liability when your company may get in some hot water. Mm -hmm. So if you're in debt, you owe some money, they can't come try to seize your personal finances for that. Right. So that's what the LLC is the best benefit of that mm -hmm. is. The, where a lot of people go wrong is getting some type of protection there. So the minute you, you mess up, you owe some money, someone wants to sue you, everything you've worked for personally is now in jeopardy. Gotcha. So that's another reason where, or another way you see people, they have the great business plan, they have the, the mind, they have everything that they could have done, but one the, wrong thing. It wasn't protected. You have to have money to be able to run these businesses. Yeah. Somebody sues you and all your personal assets are seized. <sighs> the business is the back burner now. Now right. you have to rebuild your life. Right. So I'm pretty much helping my clients navigate that in the best legal way possible. Man, and that's, and that's I think that's dope what you're doing because you're, you know, you're not waiting, you're not waiting for, um, I'm sorry, I just had a phone call. Uh, you're not waiting for, uh, you know, um, I just lose train of thought. Um, you're not waiting, you know, you're, you're not waiting for, you know, people to, to mess up or want to come to you now. You're, I mean, that's what it was. You're not, I'm sorry. You're not waiting until you're done with law school to help people. And I think that's, that's dope, especially you're doing it for like a fourth of the cost because you're like, Hey, why spend all this money to, you know, do I have to spend all this money to have somebody do the exact same thing that I can do and, and help you? And not only help, not only just take the work and do it for you, but I could also educate you as well. And that's really the angle that I'm coming from. Being that I'm a third year law student, I'm finishing up, I'm, I'm going to be taking the bar, sitting for the bar 2021. I am not a licensed attorney yet. So I'm not giving you legal advice or legal representation. What mm. I'm doing is giving you legal education. Ooh. A lot of the time, like you're just unaware. You don't know. It's intimidating forms and stacks of papers but they're mm. not even complicated they're just confusing yes so i'm taking the confusion out of that for you an attorney you pay them hourly but they hire a paralegal to do the, the forms, forms for, for you. you right and they may represent for you in court if we need to get to that point but that's another service that i offer i prep you fully if you need to get to court but a lot of the time these forms are just processes they're procedures so you don't really need to go to court for a lot of the things that i help my clients with no, and I see that a lot, like, just people don't even realize, like, not only it's like a stack of paperwork that you have to have, you have to have, like, different copies as well, right? Like, there's multiple copies that you have to have. Mm -hmm. So if you have, like, 30, a 30-page 30 stack, you think you're going to remember, you know, how to decipher that. And I think that's dope that you're helping people just, hey, I know, because that's just the start of it, right? Like, just filing the paperwork, you're not even in court yet. <laughs> I've had clients come back to me and apologize. Like, I'm so sorry. You sat here and you said all this, and mm. I don't know why, but I did not think. But they re they really sent it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> it is that meticulous, and so a lot of the time, people they pay these attorneys because they don't want to deal with that. Right. So an attorney can charge you four hundred dollars per hour because you're like, you know what, hassle over convenience, and right. it's like. So I ha I actually had um. A client tell me that they're shocked by my pricing. Like I, he was a, a life insurance that. broker, <laughs> and he was telling me how he has life insurance clients 
that they pay because you know they do their budgeting for you they they have they see their finances what they spend their money on mm. they're like for the service that you charge they're paying somebody five times that on a monthly basis you could wow. be charging way more than that and i appreciate that but i recognize that mm-hmm. and let's be real if you could pay five times more for the service would you go to a paralegal on the side or would you just hire the attorney right. mm-hmm. so i'm not necessarily trying to make a quick buck here i am actually trying to provide a service that's needed in our community people need these le- this, these legal services they yeah. need this help but they can't afford it. Yeah. So obviously, you know, I have to charge something. This takes my time. This takes my resources. This takes my expertise. However, I recognize that I am at, in a market here where my pricing is way lower than what it's going for, but it's, it's strategically set. Right. And, right. hey, you better get it while it's hot. Right. Like it. <laughs> Before the price go up. <laughs> when they add that Juris Doctor to the end of my title, Y'all gonna think I don't know some of y'all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think that's amazing because I mean you're I just just gotta, you know, give you guys a warning. What you you're going into your last year of law school, right? So you got about a year and a half before right. the prices you start to up straight. Right. Yes. <laughs> and yes. can you just let's just talk about this for a second. Like, how can we help our community, like just just people of color, you know, um, not be afraid of that representation because I feel like which is any form of uh, you know uh, lawyers doctors you know we, we be skeptical like, hold on it's gonna charge it's gonna cost me like how can we help people just understand hey we have this young lady here with this awesome service you know how can we get you around those people that need that help I would say it really comes from a place where you have to be ready you right. have to be in a place to be willing to accept help before mm-hmm. we can give it to you. Right. But it's also that research. Everyone, you know, everything thinks it's a con. I've actually had somebody ask me, was I really going to be able to help them? Like, there really are people out there that are just scamming. But right. you just you just do your research. And um, I provide, you know, the kind of like the comparisons. You can hire or retain a family law attorney in Stockton, California. And then nine times out of ten, they have a retainer, which means a deposit. You have so many, so many thousands of dollars that they require you to put in a deposit to pay things as they go on your behalf. Then on top of that, they're charging you an hourly rate, mm. which is a minimum of three to five hundred dollars an hour. Right. So it's really how bad do you need help? Is really what it boils down to. And then I also try to recommend getting ahead of it. Don't wait till you need legal help to right. get legal help. Right. Um, with family law as a prime example, child custody is the largest one that I see. And there's a misconception that you have to be on bad terms to go get child <laughs> custody agreements. Right. That is solely for the protection of all parties involved. So it's I put out this education and the benefits of why you should get them on good terms rather than why you're... Bad so it terms. helps to show that it's not just to get money out of you. And then, of course, when you're in those dire situations, you're being served with orders and temporary stay away orders you can't see your children you feel compelled to go pay that attorney five hundred dollars an hour plus whatever two thousand dollar retainer they ask for because you're desperate right they understand it's a supply and demand right so again if you could really pay five hundred dollars you wouldn't be coming to me you would go to the attorney you'd wash your hands of it you would show up when they tell you to show up in court it's crazy how just money alone will deter you from some of the most important things like for me like my time with my kids that's like that's 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 valuable that's very important and it's crazy how like because I've, I've had dudes reach out to me like hey man can you have um you know and my wife don't charge that much um, i think what to file is 150. my services for family law are 150 dollars, and that covers just from start to finish and and let's just say because you gave that range you said between three and 350 that's that's probably like the like your basic lawyer. Like if you want someone that's going to get you some results and that's going to actually like, you know, that let's just say someone that has a high caliber, someone that's more well known, th- that's going to be even higher, right? Right. That's crazy. Let's say you want that attorney's boss. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not three to it, five. Right. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. $300 and, and an hour. Is considered the lower end. If, if you think of it as like ranking, Family law is not where you're making the big bucks. Right. So to be getting five hundred dollars an hour, that's still to them, they're on the lower end of attorneys. That's if that right. makes sense. Yeah. I wanted to dabble in that too, being that I am a black woman. I, um, Anthony asked me before we started, why don't, why isn't family law kind of my, you know, where, where I like to be? 
Family law and criminal law are the two areas of law that you are stigmatized as a black woman. Oh, you, you're a lawyer, you must do criminal law or family law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same with black men. It's almost as if that's all you can do. You're, you're helping the sisters out, right? You get right. the brothers off the, the... Right. And yes, I definitely am here as a resource to the community, but I have been in school longer <laughs> than yeah. I've done anything else in my life. Right. And my academic skill set definitely is complex enough to help you enter into a multi-million dollar contract, navigate how to legally up and run your business. So it's almost like a, and not from you, Anthony, but to be automatically assumed that that's the law I practice, you kind of have to separate yourself from that. Right. That can't be all that I do because they already expect that to be all that I can do. Right. Oh, I love how you put that. So I'm, I'm sorry, man. I know, honey, I know you hate when I do this, <laughs> but I just I just have to just gloat a little bit because of not you know how intellectual you are and how smart you are. I just have to ask, how old are you? <laughs> I know you're not supposed to ask the one. I In know you're air. not supposed to. Hey, but look, I, but I, I got a point to prove. I got a point to prove. Go ahead. You gonna hear about this in the car? <laughs> I turned 25 this past June. Okay, okay. And uh, what degrees do you have? I obtained my bachelor's degree from California State University of Fresno in 2016. Okay. Pregnant with my first child, I might add. And you were you weren't even twenty one yet, right? Okay, I was okay. Not. just check, just check. Okay. <laughs> I obtained my master's degree in legal studies from Humphreys University um, in two thousand eighteen. You was pregnant for that one as well, right? I believe so. <laughs> um, kind of created a pattern there, but I will not right. be pregnant. <laughs> right, like this go around when you this go this for go the around. bar. Huh? <laughs> Breaking that cycle. Yes. Right. So I That's am expected to graduate from my juris doctor program next. Um, year and I hope to sit for the bar but you know there's actually a lot of talk right now about abolishing the bar so I'm actually highly in favor of that so if that works out I won't have a bar to sit for next year I will be able to pass right. the bar I mean um, once I complete school. my program I will be eligible to practice law in the state of California and can you let's let's talk about that for a second can you kind of go into like why the bar is kind of like not really necessarily needed Man. Break that down for us. <laughs> In as simple as terms as possible, it is a socioeconomic hurdle. Just like SATs, LSATs, MCATs, it's another hurdle to see if you can get past this. It doesn't really test competency. Mm. I could be an amazing test taker, so I pass the bar with flying colors, but I'm ethically terrible. I am unable to focus. I don't have the passion to do so. So then essentially I would still be a very awful attendant. It doesn't. It just doesn't test competency. There's a lot of um, um, articles and research and all types of facts supporting that it's done to weed out people that should not be in this status quo. Mm. Um, there's actually a lot of black attorneys rallying petitions right now, and the California State Bar has actually put out a an official statement saying, unless compelled by a court of law, they're not responding to that petition. Because they just don't want to do it. But mm. um, Louisiana actually did offer diploma privilege to their graduates this year. That's cool. Amid, amongst the social pandemic, I might say, with the racial, everything going yeah. on in the racial climate. And then with the um, COVID-19 pa- pandemic, asking hundreds of people to come and sit in, in a this room, room together. Right. And mind you, the bar is a two-day exam. It used to be three, and it just got shortened to two. But that's a lot of exposure and interaction. Right. So they were the first to take the lead to ever say, you know what? All graduates of the 2020 Juris Doctor programs are not now legally licensed attorneys. That's cool. So we're hoping to see that pattern kind of pick up. So do you think they're going to go back to the people? It was it just 2020 or was it like uh, could it be for people to like 2019 and that just so happened didn't make that cut? I know that it was just for 2020, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if it's retroactive in right. that area specifically. Right. Like, hey, hello. <laughs> Everybody's an attorney. You got your JD. You got your JD. You're an attorney. Listen, right. No, right. Exactly. Yeah. So I would imagine they've had a lot of 2019, 2018, 2017s that had not passed the bar yet out there. Right. Looking for their their opportunity. And that's wow. another thing too. California's first time bar passing rate is below 50 percent I, I believe it's below 40 percent at this point Man. you're almost expected to to prepare yourself to take it more than once and right. that goes back to the economic hurdle it places the bar exam is like a thousand dollars 
with all the fees and things. So mm. taking it more than once right. for somebody that's in a financial situation where that's not, I just have a thousand dollars for a test. Right. Like, no. no. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, um, what do you, what can, so I just got to say, man, I love what you're doing. You know, I hear she talking to people in Chicago, you know, all over the United States, anybody that you can help. And I, you know, I just have to thank you on behalf of the community because, you know, I know a lot of people don't know your services. I know we're just, I feel like this year because of COVID, a lot of people, we had to just get to that point of um, looking for those different streams of income, you know, realizing, Hey, this job, you know, it it, it could just be gone. And I thank you. You know, because so how would they contact you, and what what yes, what can you. what what array of service would you provide for for the community? I can be reached on Facebook, Coco Chanel Legal Consulting. I'm on Instagram, Coco Chanel XCC, and I'm on Twitter, CC Legal Co. Um, oh, you can also book my services on my website, Coco Chanel Legal. Co. I have that up. Nice. Mm-hmm. He'll he'll drop the little cute little I link sure at the will. bottom. How to make that work? Huh? <laughs> But I offer all of my services virtually. Um, I actually was doing that before the pandemic, so that just kind of helped, like, with the social distancing. But because, like he mentioned, I'll have clients outside of California. That may be where I'm most familiar with, but I have clients all over America. So I'm excited about that. But um, that's where you can find more information about the services that I offer. And they all include a one-hour session. Um... That gives us the opportunity to really get familiar with what it is you want and how I can help you accomplish that because it is important to understand it's not an overnight process. Success, right. success never is. So right. it's it's the commitment to the lifestyle and the, the tools that you're going to need to become successful. And I also have a business management service that I offer that is actually a month-long service where I have clients um, have like I want to say maybe four clients that are retained on this service right now where they have me for the entire month and we check in once a week because they need help with multiple areas. So mm. I, can, I handle their marketing and advertising. I handle their periodic positioning updates. So the way that you're marketing yourself, is that positioned correctly still? Right. Is that still the best market for you? Is your target audience still what you thought it was? They don't have the time because they're still nine to five employees or their parents or they're in school themselves. They're doing a lot of things. So I also offer that service where you actually get me all month and we check in once a week to let you know what's going on. What else would you like to see and give you updates on what's been going on because you like to see results. So I'm able to help you with that. (laughs) That is awesome, man, because I I can't I, I don't know, I guess for me, because, you know, just going through the systems and things like that and knowing my mom ain't paying for no attorney. So it's like, I think it's, it's, it's very beautiful because, you know, I think one thing people don't even realize is that when you, even if you give birth to this child legally, you don't have custody, right? So every state varies. Okay. But how it works. Yes. So in California, how it works is that the mother has default custody. So if there's ever an issue by law default, the father would have no legal right. Mm. So um, I do preach this a lot to our young black community because child custody and child visitation is something that often changes. Right. What works for you this year may be different next year. Right. So I also try to provide that education. It's not necessarily that you want to have to come pay somebody every time you need something changed in your life. Mm-hmm. So when you get an attorney, they're not educating you on how to do any of that. You just kind of let them know, hey, I need your service again. Right. But um, with my service, I'm also educating you on how to fill out these forms because you might find yourself in the position to need to do it again. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I recommend that and I preach that a lot to the black community for both sides of it, though. Um, It's protection because there's also what's called the possession law. So it's like Mm -hmm. when there is no custody in place. That means you have, the mother has default custody if there's ever any legal need. So you need to get a medical procedure done. The mother can make that decision without having to get consult from the dad. But that doesn't protect you from rights like, I want my child back and the dad won't return custody. Now, is this pertaining to being unmarried or is this being married as well? This is unmarried. Okay, unmarried. Married, you automatically have the same right. Okay. That's cool. That's and, good and to until know. Until we go to court or something, until there's an order in place, 
you guys are legally 50 50 joint legal custody and joint physical custody gotcha that's crazy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. get it's married that, <laughs> <laughs> it's that possession law though the the same rights that you have for your child if there's no court order you kind of have to assume that the other parent has it too so i have a lot of clients that they, they want the child back and they don't want the other parent to take the child out of state without these orders in place when they're in their custody, they have the right to do just as much as you do. And wow. Yeah, so it's like, don't wait till you need help yes, to get yeah, help. Yes, exactly. Um, if you're not married, it's not a bad thing to get a child custody. Right. It actually is for the protection of everybody involved because right. it doesn't say. Um, something could happen and you guys are both at work. It just leaves a lot of things open for interpretation. Right. So. And, no, and I think that's dope because, no, you. I think you're definitely right because... I, I could just see that, you know, let's say if, if, if I have a kid, you know, out of wedlock, um, that mom, even, even if she's, even if she's trying to do the right thing, if she try and comes with paperwork, it's going to feel like, what, what, you, what you trying to say? Mm-hmm. Right. So I think, man, it's just protecting yourself before it gets that. Cause then that's when you end up in those situations where they're sitting there going back and forth while you're just trying to get the, you know, the, the, the paperwork done or, um, Cause that's one thing I, you know, people don't realize in court. They think they you need to be bashing this person. Oh, that person did this. When you need to be speaking to, what can you do? Right. And um, protect yourself. Mm-hmm. Protect yourself legally. You know, it's 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 very important. And we have, like we said, it's a th- you know it's a fourth of the cost. So you better get it while it's hot. Right. Get it while you know. So do you do like like just say someone just wants to have a general consultation oh, with you. Yeah. Not necessarily needing anything done, but just want to kind of have some questions. Yes, I do That's have a good an question. introductory consultation service on my site that you can um, book. And that's for you to pick my brain, basically. I don't okay. know what I want to do, but I know I want to do something. Right. So if I wanted to do this, how do I go about it? Where do I start? I'm here for all those questions for the business side. And then if it's one of the other services for my family law, criminal law, civil, that's what that introductory consultation service is also for. I get the question a lot, can I sue somebody for this? <laughs> All the time. When they hear you're in law school, you're going to be a lawyer. Can I sue? Can I sue? So that's what that consultation service is for. You may not be necessarily ready to do anything, but you're mm-hmm. wondering, do I have a case? Right. I would be able to help you with that service there. And just before we go, because I love how you, you always position this, um, cause I know you, you, you talk about that a lot when someone will call you and say, Hey, can I sue my company? Can I sue? So can you please talk about how that actually can negatively? Cause like, yeah, you might get this one payout, but can you talk about how that can negatively impact the, your future endeavors? Derek always laughs at me because the <laughs> response is always the same. When somebody ever asks me, can I sue my employer? I say yes, but are you prepared to never be employed again? Mm-hmm. Suing an employer is like like a repossession on your credit. (laughs) A really big big red flag. Like, Mm. hey, hold on. She sues. This is a liability. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't mean to laugh because you could be in all right to Mm -hmm. sue. So that's the the tricky part about law too. Sometimes just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. So that's the question where I come in. So that consultation would be handy. Well, can I sue my employer? Yeah, you probably can, but let's talk about whether or not that's in your best interest. Right. (laughs) And I and I, I love that. I thank you so much because you know I I, I this is my wife, so I, I'm very thankful to be you know uh, living with You're someone proud that husband. very proud. I've been I remember I told you when we first got together. I'll be your biggest cheerleader. I'll, <laughs> I'll be a house husband, but luckily I I, I have a little more pride. Um, but, house husband. Hey, you know it's hey it's a new generation. You know? <laughs> You know, right. you might see him at the house in a house coat. Right, <laughs> right, right. Selling houses from the house. Right. <laughs> no, and you know, she's the reason why I even became a realtor. You know, one of my biggest things was, you know, being an investor. That was the my initial, like, I guess, uh, passion for real estate because I wanted to help people, you know, with rents and things like that. I felt like, you know, I could have a better control and thank you. She, uh, you know, she was like, hey, you know, why don't you just become a realtor? Because then not only you can do your own deals, but you're educated on, you know, on the regulations and things like that. And, man, we working, baby. 
Uh, so again, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for Hi. doing this we with appreciate us. Appreciate you, man. And thank you on behalf. I'm thank for everybody. <laughs> thank you for your services. Thank you for doing things that people gonna charge you an arm and a leg for. And but like we said, you got maybe a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but this is from the bottoms to the top. You guys have a great day and be safe.